Uh, hello, my name is Michael Dean. I am an artist. I uh, am originally from Newcastle upon Tyne in the north of England. I currently live in London. My main concern is writing. I say I'm an artist, but really I'm a writer. In writing, I focus on how I can share that writing and how I can deliver that writing into an intimacy. A writing about intimacy delivered into an intimacy. I found out writing as such uh, tends to involve this power relationship between the reader and the writer. Uh, writing in its standard form as text printed flat on a, in a book, on a printed page. This is the pursuit of interpretation and this doesn't interest me that much or it interests me in the point where the reader is free, uh, free from this political situation of interpreting uh, me as the central player. I found that by turning writing into objects that there's uh, more potential for the reader, or shall we say a becoming viewer, to participate in an experience of the writing. And so I found that by imitating nature perhaps, imitating the landscape, that I can produce a situation in which the reader is equal to me as writer. So there I am standing in the world having a moment that I want to hold on to for dear life. What I want is for you to stand in my shoes as I did in the world and to feel that it matters that it's you who is beholding the work. I work with concrete, uh, perhaps for want of working with ceramics, which in my country is perhaps a, a bourgeois middle class pursuit. So fuck these guys, I'm thinking about how I can make objects that are as archetypal, archetypally physical as possible, but are inexpensive and available everywhere. You know, like think of the streets, the municipality of concrete and its palimpsestical qualities. I found that by adding sand and water to cement, I can make something which is archetypally physical and somehow I can situate my writing as a, as a physical presence what people call sculpture. I am very fortunate that where I work, I have uh, what one could describe as a garden, a large outdoor space. I've been using for years this, the coming and going of the seasons as a way of editing the availability of the works that I make and want to hide. The coming of the seasons means that this work is somehow deleted. A delete is a categorical term in which something is removed or cancelled. And I guess I have the, privilege, the, the benefit of nature is that there's this moment that it's only deleted for a certain amount of time because then autumn and winter comes and with it the falling of the leaves and so the reveal of the works that I try to hide. So a little bit like life as we kind of, as, we, as we're producing things, we have a notion towards cancelling and deleting. And so it's not possible. I guess this idea of a garden and this idea of a delete are somehow a contradiction. This garden, one for a garden, one takes this idea of cultivating. How can one cultivate something that one deletes? With an idea of a garden of delete, maybe there was an idea of all of my works in some way are holding on to a memory, holding on to a moment in which I tried to make something remain. Are memories something that we've lost, or are memories something that we still have in some way? So gardening delete, gardening states of disappearance, the long destroy of entropy and holding on to something with the justice of its penultimate disappearance. This is, there is a delight in this and the, the joke being the garden of delight becomes my garden of delete. So happy broke sad bones with sticks and stones. The personification of happy and the personification of sad comes from a book that I wrote with hate dancing, uh, love, sorry, love dancing on hate's grave. This kind of battle between the black and white of up and down, happy and sad. There's a saying in, in English that we often tell children who are being teased by, their, by bullies at school that uh, sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never harm me with the idea that it's only the crossover into physical violence that can really hurt as opposed to words which are just, just noise, just air. Um, of course we know that, that words can indeed harm and actually I guess the joke is that I'm actually turning the w words that would otherwise be formless into forms of sticks and stones 
and breaking bones in the making and in the delivery of them. Um, it was important to arrive at a piece of writing that was composed and somehow proliferate with so many other different attempts at having written at other moments in time. I think many of us or all of us have experienced a certain isolation or removal uh, and loneliness in relation to quarantine and the state of the universe in relation to corona, etc. I had a moment in which I was parachuted into a, re uh, a residency uh, and had no materials other than uh, the dust of cement. Um, I couldn't access sand and therefore couldn't make concrete. I was on my own and for want of someone, uh, for, some, uh, for want of someone in the flesh to kiss, I found myself kissing the walls or kissing, kissing paper, if only for the sound or for, the, for this, the, to try to stage an, an intimate moment. I found that uh, it was in Italy, so uh, what I could get my hands on was uh, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, it didn't have to be extra virgin, but of course, enough said about that, but uh, using oil and using lipstick and leaving a trace. I'm interested in all, mo all modes of communication in relation to language or stating one's presence. And in the past, tongues have been really important to me. Perhaps kissing, using one's tongue, was a way of si situating your presence and communicating something without words. And so it was only a matter of time, I guess, before I arrived at staging one's presence in relation to a kiss and that this requires no words but um, as I started to make marks with these kisses which are kind of somehow indexical and perhaps loving or frustrated in that they're lonely kisses on a, on a piece of paper I began to find that these kisses uh, could that is essentially that I could write out using my using the stains of my lips dragging them across a piece of paper imitating pixels and bitmaps. So fast forward to two weeks in uh, the solitary confinement of the Korean uh, quarantine, I found myself kissing the walls again and rather than words was just thinking about time and the passage of time. Fucking hell, how slow it passes when you're on your own with no fresh air and no physical exercise other than bending over to kiss a piece of paper. I was thinking of the hourglass and the passage of time and its formal equivalence to the letter X and there seemed to be a certain relevance to dusting, dusting that work with cement which in itself is a form of death. Cement being limestone, uh, the burnt calcified fragments of life forms from billions of years ago made into powder that I then dust with a kiss. What I want is for you for, what I want is for it to matter that it's you who walked in through the door. What I want is for it to matter that you bring with you your, your sense of being in the world, being as it is based on the history of your subjective existence over time. There is a work stationed in front of the door, so at the very moment of your entrance, I want you to think about yourself in relation to the things that are standing around you. I'm trying to produce a landscape which in a way imitates the proliferation and the complexity of nature. When you stand in front of a poem and you throw your interpretation at the words, maybe there is a school teacher, maybe there is a power dynamic, a cultural relationship which, which tells you that your interpretation is wrong. And I found that when I stand in nature and look at the world, no motherfucker can tell me that I'm wrong. It's just me. I would like to try to give you that situation where both of us are standing equally in relation to the things that are lying on the floor and so doing, trying to strike some kind of a political situation for writing in which it's about equality and I'm facilitating you as a poet and not that you have to negotiate my existence as a poet which is private and I don't want to share with you but I want to share the sense of freedom.